Okay, this week we're just going to start by answering a few questions that we had from last week and also introduce a, a new kind of topic. So some of the questions we had from last week is when I was on this bass part, you noticed that I had two views. I had this keyboard view, but I also had this arrangement view where I can input all my notes and things. Now, this is a fantastic point about Ableton, whereas if you come to the lower right-hand side, you can switch between what's called the devices and the actual um, no notation of, of that particular clip. So as you clip through, you'll notice that this changes each time depending on what I've put in. But the device view, which is this one here, will remain the same and it's all based around the instrument that you set up. This is one of the unique features about Ableton. Now what I've done here is I've just collapsed the instrument that I've used and this first port here is just a keyboard that I've I've downloaded it's a max for live keyboard just so I can demonstrate the notes I'm using but this here is the Bofner bass that I selected from my instrument section let me try and remember where it was it was under oh that's a toughie there it is instrument racks and then it was under bases and then if I come down, here it is here. So if I double click on this, you'll notice that it inserts itself. And the good thing about this, this kind of area, this device area, is you can actually make it into a rack. So if you want to import effects onto this, you can actually just drag whatever effects you want into this. And we will get there. We're not quite there yet, but we will get there. And I'll get to all tweaking all these particular parts, okay? So let me just take that back, because I don't want that. Um, and let me just take it back to here. Now, the other question I've got is actually, how do I save? Now, I deliberately missed that because it's a fairly easy thing. But let me just go through because obviously it's it's something that's um, confusing a few people. But like all, all systems, if you come to File and then you come down to Save, whereas it's called Save Live Set here, okay? Or you can do a Save As. Once you've done that, Ableton does something really quite interesting. It creates a folder for you and it gives it this unique kind of texture on top. And inside that folder, you have all of the documents that are also available to, to that particular file or that particular project, okay? So those were the two main things that I got. How do you save and what was that thing that I, you were clicking on? Now, in this week's lesson, we're going to be looking at keyboards, but we're going to do kind of a consolidation lesson. So we've got three songs lined up that we're going to learn to play, but we're going to go back to the beginning. So we're going to look learn to input the drums again, we're going to input the bass and then we're going to input the keyboard as well. Final thing before I set off, before I log off, we're going to need to create a new channel. So let's delete the channels that we've got that we're not using. So just by selecting the channel and then pressing your delete button, you'll get rid of them. We're going to get rid of this one as well. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to just click up in this area here, right click, and what you want to do is insert MIDI track. You can also double click, but I, I just prefer right clicking, insert MIDI track, and that just guarantees what I get. Now let's start by renaming it. So right click again, or Command Control R, and press rename, and we're just going to call this keyboard. Okay, in the next lesson, we'll set up the keyboard and we'll start learning our first song, which is next to me.